Today you're gonna to learn three surprisingly easy ways to create wavy text in Photoshop to suit any style that you're looking for. Hello friend, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and the first example of creating wavy text can be done using a warp preset. Let me show you how it works. Selecting the type tool by pressing T on my keyboard, I'll just click on my canvas to create a new piece of text. I'll just use this placeholder text for now, but you can type in whatever you want. I'll then grab my move tool here and just scale this up to fit my canvas a little bit better. Once you're happy with your text, all we have to do is press Command or Control T with our type layer selected. That will then activate the Transform tool, which we can then right click on our text and go to Warp. Now up in the upper options bar, we have the Warp preset settings and we can click on this to reveal a drop down menu of a bunch of preset warping adjustments. Now you can choose any of these really, but for a wavy text effect, we're gonna either choose flag or wave. I'm gonna choose flag for now since this is my preferred method and this basically adds an up and down movement of your text. Now you can adjust the intensity of this just by clicking this little box right here. We can drag this up or we can drag this down to change the look of our wavy text. Now the downside of this is that it's limited to a max amount of distortion. So for example, I cannot drag any further than this to distort the text. That's where our next two methods are going to become a little bit more helpful. However, this is probably the easiest way of creating the wavy text. Now just for comparison's sake, if we go to the wave warp effect, this does a similar kind of look. However, it does distort the letters a little bit more and doesn't really give you that up and down movement of the text as much. So it really depends on the style that you're going for. Again, you can click on this anchor point to distort the text up or down, but again, it distorts the characters more than the entire piece of text at once. So in most cases, I'd recommend just using the flag adjustment. And then once you're happy, just press the check mark to commit to that. Now, the advantage of this method is that the type layer remains a type layer. You don't have to deal with rasterizing anything. You don't have to have a smart object. You can just select your type tool again, click on your text and begin to edit it as you like and the effect will stay in place. For the second option, we're gonna use a pen path to define a wave that our text will follow. So selecting my pen tool by pressing P, I'll then just click on my canvas to add an anchor point. I'll then click again and drag to curve that path, which is this blue line here. And then I'll click once more, drag out again, to complete this path. Now this line here is what our text is gonna be following along. So selecting my type tool by pressing T, I'm gonna go and hover over this path and you can see how my cursor now has like a squiggly line through it. So clicking on that path, my text will automatically lock onto that and it will follow the shape of that path. Now from there, you can go and edit your text as you want. And then you can just press the check mark in the upper options bar to save your changes. Now, in some cases, you probably will want to move your text along the path. Well, in that case, we need to use another tool, which we can find here in the toolbar. It's called the path selection tool. Clicking on that, we can now go to our path. And if we click on the beginning of our text, I can click and drag this over to change the starting point of my text. Likewise, I can go to the other end of my text and drag inwards to change where the end point of that visible text will be. So that way you can customize how things are looking on the path that you've created. Now the beauty of this method is that you can easily change the look of this curve or the wave effect at any time by editing the path directly. This time selecting the direct selection tool, I'll click on my pen path and now that reveals all of my anchor points once again. This time I can click on say the control arm here. I can click and drag this to adjust the curve of my path. I can click on my anchor point and I can move this one to a totally new spot or continue to bend it in a new way. And notice how my text automatically snaps to those areas. So that's why this method is super helpful because you can customize your text in any way that you want and you can always go back and adjust the look of your wave afterwards. However, if you're a beginner and you're not really sure how to work with paths, then this can be a little bit confusing. So that brings us into our final method, which is an option that's great for any skill level, but it gives you the most customization options for your wave effect. Once again, with a clear document, I'm gonna create a new piece of text once again by selecting the type tool and clicking on my canvas. Now I'll just scale this up so we can see our text a little better and the effect that is about to take place. Now the distortion wave filter that we're gonna be using is in fact a filter. And if you have tried to put a filter on text before, you know that it doesn't work without rasterizing the text. Now the problem with rasterizing text is that you can no longer edit the text after 
after it is rasterized. Now that might sound confusing, but essentially you just need to know that if you rasterize your text, you cannot go back and change the font or the spelling or anything like that. It's pretty much permanent and set in stone. So a workaround to this is using a smart object so that we can still edit our text while also using the wave distortion filter. So before we do anything, we'll right click on our text layer and go to convert to smart object. Now this little icon here will appear indicating that our text is a smart object and I'll show you why that's important after we apply the effect. Now to apply our wave distortion filter, we'll go up to filter, distort, and wave. And then we have a few different settings here to customize the look of our wave text effect. The first option is the number of generators, which basically indicates how much your text will be distorted. The higher your generator, the more times your text is going to be distorted up or down, side to side, and that kind of thing based on your other settings here. To ensure that your text is easy to read, I would set this to one, and then we can customize the wavelength and amplitude to get a better wave look without overdoing it too much. Now to the wavelength, I'd recommend setting the first slider here all the way down to its minimum point. Then we can use this bottom slider here, looking at our preview, the closer together these two points are, the more waves we'll have within a specific area. But as I start to space this out, those waves start to get further and further apart, meaning there are less of visible ups and downs across the entire piece of text. So if you want a more wavy piece of text, bring these closer together. If you want it less wavy, of course, bring it further apart. So I'm going to do something like this in the middle, so we just have one or two clear up and downs within the text. Now the amplitude is just going to control the height of the curves within your text. Once again, I'd recommend setting the top slider here all the way to the minimum value, and then we can use the bottom slider to change the amplitude of the existing wavelengths that we have set previously. Again, you don't want to go too crazy or else your text will not be legible, but you want to have just enough so that it does distort things a little. So in this case, I'll have it right around here at 156. Now our scale setting is the final option we have, which basically controls the amount of distortion you have for all of your previous settings. Now, in most cases, I will leave the horizontal at 100% because that doesn't really get affected too much because our number of generators is quite low. But I'm gonna bring my vertical scale downwards a bit so that my text isn't too crazy distorted like this. I'm just gonna bring it back a bit so then we have a more subtle effect. Now with our type set to sign and our undefined area set to repeat edge pixels, I'll click OK. Now that applies that wave effect as a smart filter below our text layer. Now, you might notice that if you grab your text tool by pressing T and you try to click on this text, it'll just create a new piece of text. So what if you want to go and edit the existing text that you just applied the filter to? Well, that's where the smart object comes into play. By double clicking on the thumbnail of your smart object text layer, this will open up a new tab where you will only see your text layer. Now from here, you can go and change this as you'd like. So I'll just put in new text. You can change the color of this text or you could even change the font as well. Once you're happy with the the changes, all you have to do is press Command or Control S to save those changes. And now going back to your original document, you can see that those new text parameters have been saved to our smart object, but our wave distortion filter is still applied. So that's why we had to convert to a smart object. So now you know three easy ways to create wavy text in Photoshop no matter what style you're looking for.